there we go. What a surprise. Like, I just woke up and we got asked, wow, well, there is Gozo Cup going on and a lot of nice teams playing whatsoever and we are short of casters. And so we said, yes, no problem, of course. And here we are, Orange versus Skyve. Definitely a nice game. Some nice seed order. And, yep, yeah, let's hop into the draft. Yeah, it definitely should be a nice game. Both teams, probably the top four in the Southeast Asian scene, if you don't count in the Chinese teams. Orange, I think, is the underdog for this game, especially as they have to use one stand-in as well. But Sky, actually, the last game they played in the Join Dota League, it ended up 1-1 one and one against zero latitude, so it's not like they're unbeatable, so it will come down to just execution. So far though, Lycan as well as the center taken out by Sky, leaving Orange to take out the Naga Siren. And to be honest, the Naga Siren, even though she did get nerfed, the Radiance still has this pretty much same effect. Gets so much farm up on her and even if she, the illusions are a little bit weaker, the hero is still as strong as ever, almost. And Patrider to the second band, so Sky may be an Invoker first pick. At least that's what I'm guessing. Then again, they can just throw a curveball at us, go for like maybe even an Ember Spirit. It's still a pretty strong hero, but no, Invoker is the first pick, so Orange, if they want to go for it, the Ember Spirit is available or something like the Dazzle, maybe even the Tree and Protector, but I'm not too sure if it has reached the Southeast Asian scene. Yep. So, Ember Spirit, <laughs> first pick for them. <laughs> I'm just fixing some stuff here besides... Uh, the stream still have to get like since this was all short notice we have to get of course all the exposure up there so you guys actually get a notice everywhere on all the forums and tickers and sites and whatever like as I said it was super short notice we still like we still got 40 viewers here together I hope it's becoming more of course we are now also listed on Gozo Gamers themselves as I said the admin asked me, asked me if we can cast this and yeah, but there's still a lot of things and posts to do, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to fix that at the moment. Yeah, and actually Orange, they did go for the tree and Protector, and looks like it's not only the Western scene realizing the full potential of that hero, especially because he just hurt so hard when you man fight against him early on. As far as supports go, at least, man, he is melee, so has to get up and close and sky. They go for the Ancient Apparition, and that's actually a support that I haven't seen for quite some time, surprisingly. Yep, absolutely. And now I actually can have a look in the draft as well. Let's see what we... Uh, yeah, let's see what we get. Ember, Dream Protector, Invoker, Ancient Apparition. Okay, well, looks so far pretty standard to me. Yeah, it certainly does. Nothing funny going on. I mean, Ancient Depression is still super strong. The Tree and Protector actually is really good against the Ancient Depression though. Because even if you get hit by the Ice Blast and you apply the Living Armor after that, sure you won't get healed from it. But it will still block the damage instances coming out yep. from the ticks of the Ice Blast. The burn damage is definitely gonna getting blocked up by the Dream Protector Living Armor. This is why Dream Protector is such a nice pick. Uh, against Ancient Apparition. And of course, yesterday we saw it already Cloud9, for example, played Lich Dream Protector combination. I mean, unfortunately, they lost, like, their games was, they were really unfortunate. They played against Empire, and oh my god, they, they got dragged. I have to say it like this. Yes, they definitely got dragged. And, well, they had Dream Protector, but they couldn't protect their buildings. Let's see if Orange is, of course, able here to bring their buildings back to full HP. Scave, they have to commit to the towers completely or those towers will end up getting healed that's what i always say in each and every draft when i see a train yeah. protector and of course remember guys 6.81 is out lish also has now the frost armor on the buildings maybe we see something like this coming out here by orange sports i mean so far everything is according to the meta we already had in 6.8 no new picks whatsoever like all those heroes that just got slight nerfs or slight buffs i mean invoker and Ember, as far as I can remember, AA Dream Protector, they remain like unchanged. So, yeah, we have to look at the bans. Well, second ban yeah, edition <laughs> is coming out. Next, the bans definitely are different. I mean, the Titan, Elder Titan, Ember Spirit combination, it's goddamn strong. It's so impossible to actually push into it. Slight of Fist with the Astro Spirit providing the natural older aura. You just can't do anything almost against it. And actually the Darkshare as well. He's just, once again, the popular hero that he used to be. 
Um, together with the GM Protector, it's really strong as well because you can combo it with the Overgrow. Yep, definitely. So nice pants by them. Orange though, taking out the Nyx Assassin. I think that's a smart choice because the Nyx Assassin, whether it be just a support or maybe played in the offlane, it combos up ex excellently with the Ancient Apparition. Just scouts things out with the Vendetta, Ice Blast flying. Vendetta hit Impale with the Ice Blast on top. Pretty much enough to take down any hero. And of course the Doom Ban, it's a decent choice if you're running the Ember Spirit because the Ember Spirit gets wrecked by the Doom. Yep, definitely. Uh, just some viewers ask us about the Mineski game. Yeah, Mineski was actually my first choice just because we have so many friends here on our social media in the stream, of course. I have no idea if they started already. If this one is a real short one, there is, of course, a chance we cast a Mineski game. But, like, if those guys here play very long, then I think they're going to start without us. But, I mean, there is still, there's uh, MSI Trek versus Annie. We got, uh, like then Sky Orange, what we cast here, Titan versus Mineski is one game, and the other one is Arrow versus um, NSN. Like, I have no idea if they wait up for casters or not. We have to see right after this game. Yeah, but so far, which doctor pick up for Orange Esports? I actually was looking at the Gozu Cup as well as the Asian qualifiers for the ESL1 before this cast a little bit, and they ran the Witch Doctor there as well. I, oh, no, I think it was WPCAs or something, but it doesn't matter. It's Chinese teams, Southeast Asian teams. And the Witch Doctor actually has been getting picked up more and more. He did get some buffs as well to the Maledict cooldown, as well as the Death Ward bouncing properly and doing a little bit more damage. So Witch Doctor can be extremely strong, especially if the Overgrowth is holding everybody in the Death Ward vicinity. Yep, absolutely. Usually we see a Witch Doctor in like combination with any strong ultimate that like is able to like bounce around or hold people in place so the Witch Doctor ultimate actually gets uh, properly in place or of course with the Void pickup with the Chrono. So let's see if that's coming out here by Orange. I would like to see it because it's just sick. The Void is placing the Chrono properly. Witch Dog can just place it inside, outside, wherever he wants and whatever is there. Gets of course the damage from the Void and the Witch Doctor Ultimate. And also yesterday we saw uh, Witch Doctor being picked up. His heal, even on low level, is pretty strong. It keeps pretty much all the team pushes, including the creeps, everything alive. Um, the mana cost, well, it's it's quite high uh, considering his mana pool. But with just some starter items, you can of course make it work. But Skip here is uh, deciding to go for a Clockwork Initiation. I mean, the Batrider is out, so there's only the Hookshot left. And yep, I definitely like it. Because with Ancient Apparition, Invoker, maybe an in, uh, Exod Invoker, like the Cox, is definitely a nice setup. You hold at least one, two in place, depending how good your Hookshot Initiation is. And then the Cox, yeah, there's, of course, space for a Meteor. And Ice Blast is also easier to land. Then again, well... It forces the other team probably into four staffs to get people out or in, or in and out of the cogs, depending. And, well, let's see if, if Skype can actually uh, yeah, answer correctly to this. Yeah, the Clockwork pick is pretty decent against the Witch Doctor, I guess, because if he gets close with the Battle Shot, that already disrupts the Death Ward, at least. Well, Hookshot, probably not the best choice just to stop the Death Ward, though. Ancient Apparition doesn't offer too many disables either. Invoker does have the Tornado as well as the Cold Snap. But still the Witch Doctor, so far I think he actually might get a few pretty nice ultimates up without it getting interrupted. And actually they go for a Clinx now as well. The Clinx is really elusive with the Skeleton Walk now. Combine that up with the Living Armor as well. It will be hard to actually bring down that hero and once he gets his Orchid up, heroes are just gonna die left and right because the Ember Spirit can also just provide long range assistance there. But Sky, they pick up the Shadow Shaman. It's really good for the lockdown on the Ember Spirit to just keep him stunned or disabled so that he can't actually fire Remnant away. And yep. also the Mass Serpent Wars for pushing against the tree and or just getting the Living Armor stacks up off. Yep. I'm actually surprised by the Klings pickup. I mean, Klings, of course, uh, brings some pushing potential, especially like with a certain level of farm. We see many Klings is, um, going for the tier 1 towers. If they haven't pushed out yet, they can just backdoor them without any problem. The rotations have to be fast, but with his Ghost Walk, he's just vanishing into uh, trees and TPing out whatsoever. Now, Shadow Shaman, you already said it, Must Open Wards brings some push elemental into the sky setup here, but, well, I'm, I'm lacking still, like, a proper carry, a proper core for Skype, uh, for Orange, 
the question is now do they actually go for something in like synergy with the witch dog so far there is not much uh, except for the overgrowth of course but then everything else if it's not chain or overgrowth then like it's actually kind of hard for them to set up um, the witch dog ultimate but maybe that's not even their goal maybe they really just wanted the casket and the heal of course coming out plus the maledict yesterday we saw actually the maledict coming out by a witch dog usually we see the one two and then ultimate build uh, as the proper build and by the way there's a huge thunderstorm behind me so if I'm going offline, then I've been struck by lightning. Oh, I could actually hear that. Wow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's loud, very loud. And now the, the sky is just opening and there's a lot of... But yeah, I was talking about targets being stunned or rooted, hold in pl place. It is Tidehunter coming out. That means now we have a Ravage setting it up, Treen Protector following up with uh, Overgrowth. Ember Spirit doing his work with the chains. Clinks, of course, going in there, and Witch Dog should also have a nice time, plus the caskets um, bouncing around. But the entire thing needs quite some setup, and Skyve can pretty much evade a lot of it by just being spread out. But if they're not spread out, then yeah, this looks interesting to say the least. Maybe, Smells to be honest, if a Witch Dog replaced here by a Darkseer would have been maybe a better pick. So you get all the people rather in place than the Ravage on top of it, the Overgrowth. I could have imagined this setup, but either way, they decide, uh, Skyf decides to go for a Swen. And even there, I would have liked to see a Darkseer because of the Stormhammer setup with the Vacuum. But both teams don't take it even in consideration. And Darkseer was banned. Oh, it was already banned. I did. Yeah. Well, see, I'm <laughs> sleeping. I'm still sleeping. They just woke me up to cast this here, and I'm like, okay, yeah, there we go. I'm oh, absolutely sleepy, didn't drink, didn't eat. Uh, the only thing I did was, like, talking on Skype with people and then jumping directly into the cast. I hope I get something to eat while casting, though. <laughs> yeah, it's the Sven pick. I'm not too sure. He got buffed a little bit, got some more base damage, I think. Six extra base damage, was it? So, I guess it's decent enough. But they don't really have anything to bring them together for the cleave. The cleave still has a huge area anyway. But I'm not too sure if it will work out. Especially as Orange can just kite the Sven around probably. He's going to have to rush the BKB as fast as he can. Yep, definitely. And now we go for a fast team introduction here. We have Winter here with a nice set, by the way. He has the Kraken on his head that always looks funny. On the Titan, we have the Stand and Sad Red on the Witch Dog. Also with a very nice set. In CDC... On the train protector, Isera playing the Ember Spirit, and last but not least, it's Socks on the Clinks. Yeah, and for Skyth on the Radiant side, Miracle, of course, will be playing the Carries Man for them. I think X Freedom should be on the Ancient Apparition, leaving Chibix to play the mid lane Invoker with Poloson. At the moment, probably just warding or scouting things out on the Shadow Shaman. And of course, offlane will be played by Hana. Hana, Hana. Yeah, whatever. But we see here four people of orange scouting through the jungle. There is an observer ward coming out. Of course, a pretty traditional one giving here a vision in the side and, of course, to the bottom rune. But, yep, yeah, Swen and AA combination. They stand here pretty defensively. Maybe we even see some D warning coming out. There would be one sentry on the ancient apparition. And, by the way, do you hear the rain and everything else in the background as well? No, can't nope. say I do. Okay, so I can leave the it window. It was only open. the thunder. Yeah, it was the thunder. But either way, Winter finds now Invisibility Rune, but this one got scouted out by Ancient Apparition. Therefore, I'm actually quite surprised he takes his upper route here around the bigger camp, because like he doesn't know what is there around with the slow um, of the gush. That would be quite... Hmm. Oh, wait, I just said gush. Yeah, no, it's gush. What? It's yeah. gush. <laughs> I was, I don't know, something in my brain just told me, oh, it's not called gush. And then I was, like, looking on Titan, but yeah, it's actually called gush. Either yeah, they way, know Winter is there, though. He just ran past the Sentry Ward, so they shouldn't be get, getting caught off card, Miracle. I mean, but if he gets caught, oh, yeah, they go they for go. the gush onto X Freedom. There's the Chilling Touch coming out for the extra. Shackles is on the Titan Hunter. There's the stun onto two, but X Freedom will go down. Winter at least will fall as well. Follows and takes care of that. But still yep. a one for one and first blood. Well, I guess Winter being the 
Suppose yep. it's farmer on this lane dying wasn't the ideal thing, but still they got the extra gold. Oh, it's it's actually nice. We saw this attempt in some CIS team game, which we, uh, we no, we didn't cast it. I actually watched it on stream, but like we saw it this week already, like a Titanta with an Orchid build. But I can't remember. I think it was an ESL qualifier game. But either way, this was a one-one trade, as you already said, and the first part goes to Orange, and that definitely helps because Winter is almost. Uh, level 2 here. Unfortunately, he kind of missed out on that kill. No, actually, yeah. No, he got it. Oh, yeah, Sven is level 2 because, yep, the Ancient Apparition died, so the experience was not shared. But either way, it's definitely more worth it for Orange to get there the first blood. It was just a millisecond, pretty much, dividing those two kills. And either way, we have here on the offline, like, uh, Sox is definitely doing well against the clockwork just for the fact he's being ranged and clockwork like has actually a hard time to set up cogs whatsoever let's see how this turns out yeah the clinks definitely should have the upper hand in that matchup if not outright dominate and actually as far as the mid lane matchup goes usually the invoker actually kind of crushes the ember spirit because the ember spirit doesn't take right click harassment as well Especially if there's the cold snap on top by the invoker, but now with the living armor coming on him every now and then It definitely helps him just getting the farm and staying on the lane. Yep, absolutely It definitely helps against like the harass coming out by ember at a certain level with the chains right now Well, he has a double damage. That's kind of dangerous But then again the ember you also don't want to go melee at this point just because cold snap is coming out and ember Like starting with a very low low base armor like you get a lot of right clicks and yep, yeah, you're just very squishy, especially against Invoker. Only, yep, yeah, only thing I'm quite surprised is this is uh, this is going to be Quas Vex Invoker, uh, as it looks at the moment. So I was actually thinking about um, uh, Exot Invoker because they have the Shackle setup, they have the Storm Hammer, which leaves yep space for a lot of sun striking. That would have given them some extra pushing power as well with the Forge Spirits. But I guess I really like to be honest that this going Quas Vex because the mana burn, it's gonna hurt the lineup of Orange so much. The Ember Spirit, the Tide Hunter, as well as even the tree and maybe Oh, there's, there's the Shackles onto Winter. They will follow up with the Storm Hammer. Now they're waiting for us and taking a lot of harassment in return. There's the stun finally, but they already lose one Winter. Might even not die from this. A few more right clicks. No miracle has to back off. What? Sven? I think he waited too long and they chose the wrong target as well. Yep, definitely. So one goes down, but the other tri lane, they actually, yep, they managed to survive. And you saw their level 2 voodoo restoration, that was also definitely helping the Titan Hunter to survive there. Like he was, I think, about one hit or two hits away from being killed, but the voodoo restoration made it like three hits required. And simply for that reason, they couldn't go further. They would have ended up under the tier 1, losing even more. So it was the correct decision by Scythe then to not go further. But I was still surprised because with. Uh, the Chilling Touch, which is level 1, um, they still didn't manage to get the Tide Hunter down. I mean, he went for Anchor Smash, there's no point in Kraken Shell. Uh, I guess for him, to be honest, it would be worth it to go for at least one point Kraken Shell. Because with the Storm Hammer and Shaka on top of it, he will definitely remove debuffs uh, without a problem. And, well, maybe he's coming He has a Stout Shield at the moment, just to tank up the right clicks a little bit. And of course, the Anchor Smash, it actually got buffed as well, it used to reduce the damage by 40%, now it's 60%. Yep. I think that's actually the reason why Miracle didn't run in straight away to go for the kill once he got shackled up, because he was trying to avoid the Anchor Smash, because actually once that comes out, the Sven doesn't do any right click damage anymore. Yep, absolutely. By the way, I have to stupidly ask, but like the even the round 3 games, they are still best of 1 format, right? And out of those yeah, round 3, uh, then there is... The qualifier is done for Gozo. Oh, oh, Polos on might get wrapped around. If he gets slowed down by the Gush, that might be the end of it. Winter though gets the Gush finally, was a little bit slow on it. There's the lead sheet for the extra slow Polos on. Now the Paralyzing Cask is gonna go down as well. Oh yeah, and Winter getting that farm. Absolutely. I mean, it's beautifully done, but then again, Polosan a bit out of position there. He in the mid, we now see harassed by Isera, putting a lot of damage up. And there's a hook shot. hook shot coming out as well. Tornado actually, Isera will be going down. Clockwork, nice rotation, he has the region rune as well, so didn't really care about using all of his mana for it. Yep, absolutely. So they get the kill on the invoker, uh, on the ember, and yep, that gives invoker definitely like the heads up in the mid lane setup so far. But I guess they are fine at the moment with what they get. Um, the Glinks is farming, Winter, like they had a nice start, they have the first blood advantage, now they got a bonus kill here on Polosan, and also the other encounter 
like went in their favor and oh my god look at this top line like when he hits with a fire arrow there like that cl that poor clockwork is losing about i don't know 10 15 percent of his hp pool just by one arrow so definitely need to do something and i think they want to do something because polo sun is coming in there yeah but, they uh, want to go oh there's the dust coming out they don't have the hook shot though they need to get the power cocks there's the better so thanks to the hex now he's caught there's the shackle as well and the clinks actually will take a fall here or will he there's the living armor he's still alive finally does go down <laughs> that living armor man Yep, that living armor bought him some more time, but the problem was he couldn't get rid of his ghost walk and the dust now after 6.8 actually applies to slow when you were invisible. That's the problem, you can't toggle it off. That would actually be a good idea. Please, Ice Rock, if you hear this, like make ghost walk to, uh, like that you can toggle it. But in, even without ghost walk, the, the, the clinks is very slow, so I don't think he could have escaped there, especially if just one... A uh, battery assault would have hit him. That would have been he the slowdown. He doesn't have boots of speed at the moment either, yep. so that definitely hurt him there. And to be honest, now with this, actually with the clockwork, he rotated mid as well. So I would have thought that Shox has like a huge last hit advantage on the Clinks, but it's 36 on the Clinks at the moment with 34 on Hana. So it's pretty much neck and neck, even though the clockwork has rotated around a bit. Yeah, now here in the mid they try to do something. Tornado EMP is out, Isera needs to set up the chains and then, yep, the Leech Seed could come in, but yeah, in CDC he's already going back, that Invoker is well aware of it, and killing a Quas Wax Invoker with a full mana pool, I don't think that's possible. He would come out with his Tornado and then he would just go ghost walking away, so I don't think that's even possible to get a kill on him. Yeah, it definitely needs a lot of rotation to actually make that happen and orange. It's not like their supports have the most kill potential solo. They need like two or three heroes at least there. Like only the tree end mid lane together with the Ember, I actually don't think it would be enough. But oh, there's the hook shot onto his share EMP as well. He gets the fire remnant out of Sky. They were banking on the Ember not having a fire remnant to go back to. Yep. But that wasn't the case. I mean, really heads up play, of course, as well, leaving a fire remnant back just in case such kanks happen but now there's double damage on the tree oh this might be scary. Oh, this is this is really hurting this is more this is almost 190 right like they just they're going, there's the there. leech coming out the gosh actually was there as well but a nice storm hammer standing up two to three heroes now the tp is coming in they can't really turn it around or can they no hook shot by hana so maybe a waste of a tp but polosan no can't really catch up from the side no, either. Absolutely the right decision to go out there. It's just too dangerous because, yep, they still had the chilling touch. They had now Hana rotation. Also, Polosan came from the side. That would have been a hex and the shackle, and that would have been, yeah, kind of evil. Even though I have to say, like, if Dream Protector would have been six, I mean, worth a fight, but he's definitely not. Uh, even Titan is missing his level six. With the Ravage, I think they could have gone for something. Um, I'm pretty certain of that they have a lot of burst damage we already mentioned the double damage there and now uh, I think they still want to do something here Polosan now coming as well oh there's the storm hammer onto winter with the mass serpent word he's caught there's the shackles as well the leech it is healing him up with the living armor he has to eat his way through the mass serpent word he can't really do it magic one as well he's somehow still alive and maybe will remain alive as well x freedom the last right click actually was barely enough after another storm hammer, they take out the tree and but this era is there, catches one counter kill, going for a miracle as well, he's gonna chase him down already, tornado EMP, can they get the turn around, no mana for the storm hammer, so it looks like this will be the end, but the mass serpent was under the tower, now we're chipping away at that one as well, so a really nice exchange and of course the support. Shadow Shaman being level 6, they're making the difference. Yep, it was absolutely a messy team fight, I have to say. And to be honest, I think this team fight was really decided by levels. Because if that would have been a Ravage, if that would have been an Overgrowth, easy. And now Winter going for another Gush here on Sven. He got a Stormhammer, so he definitely would go away. But Jesus Christ, I mean, Polosan being level 6 and like the tri lane sticking together, sharing the XP and not going in the background, having at least one of those big ultimates, that's like really bad actually by orange they should have i don't know gone further back maybe with the witch dog so that titan actually gets his ravage up that would have turned the fight in my opinion because all of them stand under the tower they even had time to clear out those serpent wards but yep they decided to stick together so they were level five. might be trouble shocks is moving in but chibix has a sentry ward there as well if he doesn't back up too far 
But more help is coming, Isar. He needs the Searing Chains. They are level 2, so a 2 second disable it might be enough. But then again, X Freedom has the Ice Blast. He's camping. Oh, the Searing Chains go out just as the Ghost Walk is there. Ice Blast will hit the shots. But yeah, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, he's gonna be fine with the living armor, especially. It will just soak up a couple hits here. You, you can see it, but yeah, it's, it's already off. It's just level 1 Ice Blast. It's not too scary after all. And so, Shocks missing up, out on some farming time, he's not too close actually, to be honest, to his Orchid. And oh, Mask of Man has finished up on Miracle on the Sven now as well. He's just going full out glass cannon style at the moment. Yep, absolutely, but uh, why not? That's, that's a good question. Just why not? I mean, you can, you have, you have to space create it whatsoever, but... I'm more looking forward to the Titan to hear what he is doing because now he's level 6 and I think they should go fight with it. The ultimate on level 1 is is definitely strong enough. They have Klings as a damage source, they have Ember as a damage damage source, so why not go in for it? Here in the mid, they, he's gonna be in trouble though. They, oh, there's the Hex, there's the Mass Serpent for Shackles on top of it. They need to get him down. EMP, no mana for the Fire Remnant actually. Nice yep, magic stick. one coming to the rescue. Stick, best item in the game, definitely. He used the stick pretty fast, gave him HP and mana back and instant remnant out. So it's there. His safe play here really saved his ass pretty much twice already. So yeah, absolutely working out for him. Sven, by the way, in the meantime, he got a Mask of Madness and now that is, of course, easy going for him because he can just swap into the jungle and just farm all those oh, camps. Ice playing mid actually, Sarah doesn't get caught by the five remnants away as well. He got the debuff, but... No blast damage, she had the flame card up anyway. Yeah, it should be enough, yeah, 180 HP and yeah, the debuff just running out. But if this would be a level 2 ice blast, that would have been a kill, so yeah. You gotta be careful next time. Also, this AA is grabbing some, no, well, I was about to say nice XP, but actually he's not. He's just level 6 and since then barely got any XP. He's now stacking uh, the Ancients, but for who? All those ancients, Swen then, I guess with his cleave, he went four points into cleave, by the way. This is a very uncommon build. Uh, it's a pretty much a farm build for jungle and whatever, but I don't like it because the storm hammer is so much damage. And the hell is going on here on the streets? There's yeah, an ice they have to back off. Top I over. remember it actually follows on no ember spirit. Won't follow up that aggressively, but the tower still taking a fall. Ice blast just coming in a bit too late as well. But to be honest. I think uh, the last Sven I saw also went for the build like one point in Stormhammer then maxing out the other two. I guess the stun duration is the same, the damage sure it increases 75 per skill, per level up. But yep. if you only catch one hero maybe it's not that important. I'm, well, I guess getting faster for Ohana might be in huge trouble. Paralyzing cast bouncing around the Sarah is there as well. There's the death ward and there's nowhere to run for the yep. That's definitely kill. At the same time they go for train protector here. And yep, he will fall down as well. Like, the chilling touch and the shackles to save in this. Now that the question is, do they want to trade? Because, yeah, Zox can do actually quite some damage here on the tier 2 tower, but the tier 1 tower is now under attack. Swen got his ultimate up, cleaning out the creep wave easily, and the master open wards doing the rest. So, there's also, yep, yeah, there's Ice Blast flying to the tier 2 top, but they won't find anyone there. So, in the end, it's a 1 1 trade, hero wise, and the tier 1. It's also going down like kind of equal trade. Yeah, Orange maybe slightly <coughs> ahead because Clockwork definitely a higher priority target than the three entities at the moment. Yep, and it's also time to show game the game crafts game. by the way. Let's see. We have 3000 experience for Skype at the moment and yeah, it's just a very tiny gold lead for Skype as well. So not really worth to mention. We are 15 minutes in and this game is, yep. Yeah, could go either way, and I like, I like what Sven does here. I'll show you the GPM at the moment. He's at 417, but it will definitely go higher, just because he's also starting to stack jungle camps. And when he goes into the ancients, he will get a lot of farm. So I like the approach they got on the Sven here. It's definitely working out. He only has to be careful that uh, Sox doesn't come in with the orchid, because then this Sven will die easily, even with his buff base armor. Yeah, Shox definitely is getting scary now that he has his Orchid. Sure, he's not the tankiest, and other than the Orchid, maybe not that scary yet. But he has 1k gold, so probably Power Threat's gonna get finished up, and looks like they will go for the tier 1 bottom lane as Sky go for the tier 1 mid, so might be a change again. 
Yep, but there is now two more TPs. It would be still three versus four. The train protector is now here. There comes nice sentries out, I have to say. Like those sentry, they protect against rotations of the clinks. So this is the best thing you can do against the clinks. Just, yep, put the sentries everywhere in all those entries uh, of the lanes, of the high grounds, and of course, uh, where you want to fight. So making sure that Klinks is getting caught out, or at least you see or know that he's there. Yeah, Defense guy really nicely done by the supports of them. Just they've had Sentry Wards throughout the entire game, at least one on the mid lane constantly, and they spot out Winter with that as well. Yeah, exactly. So invisibility when you have a Klinks and the other team is prepared, it's definitely something you don't want to have. And now, yep, they pop the Sentry of themselves, so Winter actually not seen anymore but they saw him before that means they have to go back clockwork would be here on the side for a hookshot but i don't think we're gonna see some clash here in the mid because titan is going top like so was socks looking for a kill there would be no sentry whatsoever but yep he don't he, he won't find anything but he will still eat some creeps away i think the problem is that socks at the moment is trying to get um some pickoffs but skype is playing this out really really well i have to say it and Maybe he should farm more, get up level 16, etc. They smoked up at the moment, though. Shock's coming in from the back as well. He will maybe scout things out. There's a nice sentry ward between the towers, between the jungle here. But actually, Shock's, he saw Hana. They know where the clockwork is, at least. And Orange coming in from the side as well. They have the Ravage. Will we see the first one of this game? Oh, when they would see Sven here. Oh, Shocks actually scouting things out. There's the dust of appearance. There's the hex as well. Shocks. Oh god, he's gonna go down before the fight. There's the Ravage. Only catch is one paralytic gas. He's bouncing around Polosan. Might fall. Ice Blast comes in winter. In the mass serpent was two down for Orange. It's disaster now in TDSC. Stunned up as well. 3 4 0. And yeah. Orange, they thought they had the initiation there. But no. Shocks just a little bit too eager. They're going in a little bit ahead of time. That's the biggest problem, like like he getting caught out here somewhere, the dust coming out, like Skype is so prepared for the invisibility or against the invisibility, like they've been just waiting there. They know, they knew Orange wants to do something that they suddenly were missing from the map, so there was not many options where they could come from. That's the biggest problem in here. Oh, maybe they want to go for, no. Like this was a nice try to like fake with the illusions, maybe baiting out a hookshot, but the hookshot was anyway on cooldown. But yeah, still, I don't know, Sky well prepared what Orange is trying to do here, and it's just not working out. Even the Ravage, by the way, just hit on one target. Like, I don't think he's going for a Blink initiation, or will he? 1,700 gold. Maybe he has blink. to go for the Blink, I think. Yeah. He just has to get close, then. Actually, the Ravage movement speed, it starts around him and goes further away. It actually got slowed down a few patches ago, I think. So it's yep. not the hardest spell to just outrun if you're not exactly in the middle of it. So he definitely needs to blink there to actually be able to hit it and then follow it up with an overgrowth with a death ward by the witch doctor. But yep. Sky, like they're playing really well and BKB is now up on Miracle plus suddenly 1.6k gold as well. And this, yeah, this when this when is getting scary. Right now he he cannot be stopped with the BKB. That's the biggest problem. Like, if he wants to, he can just chew through it. This is level 2 ultimate. We, like, as I already said, he has power threats, the Mask of Madness, and the BKB. This combination is enough, of course, to easily chew through any supports and also clings for that matter. Like, this is super scary. If they get them in the position, uh, even maybe with the cleave up, this is just horrible, horrible for Orange. So, you can really just pray that you burst down this one. ASAP because he will be the main damage source and he will hit for a lot. He most certainly will. At least the Blink Dagger is now up on Winter, but actually Poloson on the Shadow Shaman got his Blink Dagger like a minute or two before Winter and it's a support Shadow Shaman on, on top of it. So if they have some nice sentries as they've been having so far, then Poloson Blink Dagger initiation, especially onto Shocks who maybe is hoping for an easy kill. He might just get counter initiated upon, but actually Orange themselves, they've started throwing up a ton of sentries as well. Yep, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm looking at the crafts again, but like the development is pretty much the same. Last time we checked was uh, around the, I think 14, 13 minutes mark, and that the the difference was just yep a slight difference. Now it's growing. Skiff is yep 
building up their advantage. Now let's see what we got here. Like Sarah scouted out the Invoker, he just vanished into a Ghost War. And like again, Skyve, they just stick together. This is what I like the most about them. They just stick together. They know Orange wants to do something. Because in the long run, like Skyve is looking better in late game, I think, with that Sven. Because if that Sven gets super fat, I don't think the Ember in combination with the Klings can't do that much. Let's see. I mean, maybe I'm wrong because also Klings is, can get very, very scary, especially because he will go for a BKB of his own after he already got the Orchid. But still, like it comes down to the fact that this Orchid didn't have one single use yet that led to a kill. So this is why I like Skiff the most, because they can just yeah stick together and the Orchid won't do anything so far. Yeah, it's so frustrating to actually play a Klinks when the enemy team is just grouping up constantly. That hero is just designed to get the pick the solo kills. But of course, Sky, they're an experienced team. They know exactly how to play against the Klinks. And that's actually one reason that Klinks isn't played all that often. Is that he's not that great in team fights before he gets his BKB up. And it may take quite some time to actually get the Orchid plus the BKB, especially if you don't find the pickups. Yep. And look at this, Winter is farming now the Ancients. This is a triple stack. And Jesus Christ, he's farming them with Anchor Smash. Like, but <laughs> it does reduce the damage from them, so. <laughs> it's, it's still, it's pretty crazy what he's trying to do here. Like, I mean, he's getting them eventually cleared out, but. Wow, he's taking a lot of damage there. His Blink Dagger would be up, we already talked about it like 10 minutes ago. Like, yes, he decided to go for that Blink Initiation. And I think, yeah, it's it's badly needed. Because, yeah, didn't work out. But now he at top. Yeah, they might go on Witch Doctor, but the Living Armor is enough. Actually, there's the Orchid now in GBX. It still wasn't enough. There's the Shearing Chains as well. Orchid coming out from Shocks and Invoker. Way too aggressive there, and he will take the Soul Burn damage. Yep, he will just pop from the Orchid. If not the Orchid, then he would have died from the Flame. Uh, flame guard just behind him. Ember was on follow. So yeah, Winter eventually cleared out his ancient stacks. A new one spawned already, but he has to go back to the base. Has to be careful as well. I mean, he got tranquil boots, but still, if Skype would have just got scouted it out, maybe ice blast flew in. But either way, I mean, right now the teams it's sort of a standoff, and now the invoker tried to do something. I don't know. I still don't know. It's it's a very static game. I have to say it. Like I really thought with the clings. Uh, we're gonna see more action, like him rotating around, but as I said, Sky, they stick together. The Invoker was the only one that dared to go out, and, well, he paid with his life for it. Now, we also permanently see the Rocket Flyers going into the Rosh Pit. They know, of course, Orange is on the Dire side. They have the Dire advantage on the Rosh Pit. They also have the Vision, like, definitely more dominant Vision here. You have one Observer in the mid, one here on a traditional spot for the bottom rune. But I still, it's it's too scary to go into that rush pit, especially with the Sven having this setup already. So you need at least one kill before, and maybe we're gonna see that one top, Polusan, and yeah, in followed by here, the invoke. Yeah, the Ice Blast is flying as well. Oh, Shock the Blink, Hex, maybe. Yes, there's the Hex coming out. Shackle on top of it. Mass Serpent for just in case. With your kid as well. No Living Armor will save you from that. Yep, absolutely. I <laughs> think you're just. You're just smashed there. Must up and wards on you. No way to get out of it. At least Shox actually is getting really close to his PKB, to be honest. Has the Ogre Club and the Mirfield Hammer. So only, only needs around 700 more gold to actually finish it up. So the kill, delaying that by a little bit, but still he will have it. And once he does, I think that may be the cue for them to go for the team fights. <laughs> Absolutely. And. Well, at the moment, I mean, as I said, I said it like 10 minutes ago already. I think Skyf, they can just sit back and farm because I think they have the better setup. Now we saw Insidious C here with the Nature Skies looking maybe for something on the Invoker. The Overgrowth would have done it, but like there's nothing to follow up anyway. That would not be a damage source whatsoever because it would just be the Witch Dog. So I don't know. It's, it's really orange. They don't press the issue here, and they think they have the advantage later. Let's see who's right. I mean, at the moment, Winter. Winter, Winter. He has to be careful. Yeah, there's coming off. There's the EMP. Orchid as well. Winter of has the Kraken Shell, so he should be fine. And will be as well. Yeah, the Kraken Shell. Even level 1, the damage threshold. Well, it's it's pretty high, actually. 600, considering he has only uh, 1,300 HP pool. But still, it, it's enough for twice removing debuffs. Let's see, but now Sven, yep, Sven starts to come in the game. 
he doesn't even stop with the cliff being up here on that tower and now it doesn't look like they want to do something they drop this tier too just like that okay this is absolutely surprise yeah this one has the assault curse as well so he takes makes quick work of the tower especially if there's the alacrity on as well invoker if he remembers in the team fight as well to alacrity miracle up this one is just going to be so scary, but shocks now. He might find Polosan. Oh, Polosan, Shadow Shaman. I think Lynx might get the first solo pick off he's looking for. Uh, he's with the Invoker out. there being close, I don't think so. He could have gone for it straight away, but then again, he didn't have pretty much any vision of what's going on around him. Yeah, it's also pretty squishy because, like, in those here around those trees, like, he can just, you know, vanish into Fog of War pretty fast and it might not have been enough for a kill, but it might have been enough for him being caught out. And now he's just finishing off the tier 1 tower, but no, very nice cliff coming out, saving the tower at 30 HP. They're not quick enough to get in there trying to get the last hit, so it's gonna be a deny. And yep, Skyf, I don't know, they just look better at the moment because they get the split, split push up. Sven now here top munching through that tier 1 tower and yep orange they try to stick together but that oh chibix runs into trouble is he gets slowed down by the ghost wall and there's oh. the dust but chibix already backed off so no dust for another minute now this is pretty bad actually like them being first of all scouted out the dust going into nothing now oh there's orchid onto miracle though he has the pkb if needed but he's just so tanky with all the armor from the assault turret. Ice oh. Blast as well, now there's the hook shot onto Winter, he gets sorted up, has the force left though, gets away from the cock, the tornado catches too as well, follows on, mass serpent ward, catches the witch doctor. Not the highest priority kill, but still, he just blew up immediately and Ysera hasn't popped his PKB yet, still has it on the Ember if they want to fight. Yep. Oh, yes, they gem. caught out it, yes. This gem is doing work, now they saw him in the nature skies, that is two down, two supports down for orange and, yep. They will keep on going. They will... Yep. Why not? I mean, they can just go for the tier 2 tower. They have Sven. Sven got his ultimate, got BKB. This one is still on 10 seconds. So far, he didn't need to use it. Also, those big ultimates, we didn't see a single overgrowth. Just one Ravage and... I don't know. Like, on paper, Orange Strap looks so solid. But there it comes. There's the Ravage coming out. They want Chibik so bad and they will get the kill as well. The follow on Oh, Death Ward coming out now. Hana orchid it up. He has the escape with the power cogs or does he? There's the Searing Chains coming out. I think this might be the fight Orange has been looking for. Now Kaish as well. They go down. Miracle Easter. Stormhammer onto so He has the Castor with the PKB Winter. Four stepped out. Sky King thinks are out. But shocks one more right click. Oh, the he's creep. blocked by his creep. <laughs> he does the kill in yet. The gem is on the ground. And Ysera now has to run away. Three right clicks was all it took from Miracle. Red coming in. Getting the gem at least. So making something out of it. And Orange it looked really good for them. But suddenly a Sven happened. Yep, this one. That's that's the funny part. Like with three of his team down, he could still chew through the entire orange team if they wouldn't kite him. But yeah, after his BKB ran out and everything was the right decision to just go away. And he will just keep farming, keep even <laughs> being more scary. Just look we at see the net worth of this one. Like it's just crazy. It's it's 18k. The second one has 10k, like which would be socks on the clings and invoker pretty much being on a parallel uh, network here as well. This is this is just scary. This when, oh my god, like, trust me, he's gonna chew through an entire team here on his own if he just gets more and more farm. Yeah, I mean, we are at the 30 minutes mark pretty soon and his BKB just got used the first time. So he still has a nine seconds BKB at his disposal. Who's gonna stop him? Nothing can stop him except for the overgrowth after the BKB and, pff, well, now is there, a, they either have a Skype call or their Skype is down. What is it? I, I'm not quite sure. I, I think it's Skype issues probably. I don't really think somebody's calling them. It's like, oh, we got to answer it. Sorry, guys. It's your, it's your manager. He wants to say something. <laughs> G, wait. Okay, G, G. <laughs> <laughs> Decide for something, please. But the Miracle now picking up a Manta style as well. And I think it's a pretty nice item choice because I think it's mostly to get rid of the Orchid buff. So that he actually doesn't wait, have to waste his BKB charts when he gets orchided up. Oh, and I think we're gonna see a Roshan attempt here by Sky. Why not? The Sven has now a double damage and look at this Roshan. But now the Fire Ram is actually scouting it out and it would be also in a nice position to they steal. They don't have Ravage though. 
Ysera has to be spot on with the fire remnant in if they want to get it, I think. Yeah. And Hana, he's there, they probably does. There's nothing there. Oh, nice power cocks by Hana coming out as well. Oh, oh Ysera he comes tried. in, he doesn't get the Aegis though, and he almost loses his life for it. But oh, BKB is ice out. Blast. Oh, the tornado still chasing as well, Ice Blast. We'll actually connect, but it's... They needed, like, the tornado to hit as well. Yeah, and it's still level 1. The AA not getting too much level at the moment. Like, he is, yeah, just about the same level as Witch Dog and Dream Protector level 9. Like, those two supports, they definitely need their level 11 for the next ulti coming out. But this is always a bad sign. I always say it in pretty much the same manner. Like, if there's a Radiant team going for the Roshan, mostly uncontested, getting through with it, then it's always a bad sign. You should, as a Dire team, have the advantage around the Rush Pit. You should do it not just in a sneaking fashion, of course, you should be able to even contest it much better. But, I mean, they're out of towers, they're all down, and this one is just too scary to go in. And now, yep, this guy with the Aegis, they can just go in, easily press into the base. Why not? It should be quite easy, Shocks wants to come in from behind, but I think they just scout it out. There's the sentry, follow some blink, there's the Orki coming out, PKB Orki counter, one to Chivix, Chivix has to escape. Hookshot missing as well, actually. So oh, kind now of nice actually might Miracle. lose his He has the Aegis though, so it doesn't matter that much. He gets taken out, Mech is there, there's the Hex onto Shocks. Miracle still alive, goes in with the right clicks, Alacrity is up, they take care of Shocks. he's going down and then... Somehow managed to survive. He's still tanking things up, going for the tower. He just doesn't have a care in he the world. He just doesn't care at all. Like he's on 20 HP. Nobody's getting him down. <laughs> oh my no, god! Like, he just oh, there's the hex. 50 Orki don't we share a shackle up as well. They need the follow up damage. Nice. Ravage finally catching for five hero overgrowth as well. They kill off one. Chibix has to back away with Miracle now. With the God Strength just going to town. Three already dead. Two right clicks. All it takes for the Witch Doctor as well. Winter buys back, but Miracle does he want to dive the fountain? Looks like he definitely thought about it. Finally backing off. Has the Crystal is now also finished. Plus another 2k gold. Yeah, oh, Miracle, Miracle is just zoning them out now. He also has crit. I mean, he gets quite some damage now here. But he will go back, like there should be a urn still avoidable, no, but yeah, the Rax is down either way. Oh well, well the cliff that used like for now, but... perfect fight or initiation for orange, more or less. Then again, Shox was dead at yeah. the time of the fight. Oh, Winter goes in, there's the guy Shanta Miracle, well, Isera is there, gets the Searing Chain, but Chibix helping out Manta style as well. Miracle wants to kill off the enemy. Can't really follow up, he's still too low to go and man fight too well, but Winter looks like he's still hunting for something. Doesn't look like he's gonna catch anything though. Nope, but I mean, <laughs> Winter just running directly into the cogs. Poor guy, I mean, that Titans and everything, I don't know, the trial and everything looked so decent, but the Sven in the end just doing so much better, like, I mean, still, he just uses BKB once the... No, actually, he didn't use his BKB at all this fight. <laughs> this is a surprise. I actually thought he used his BKB, but no. Like, he still has a 9 seconds BKB. He's super greedy on his BKB charges, and I mean, rightly so. He could use them for the other high crown uh, break attempts there. Why not? <laughs> it's just... I'm absolutely su surprised now. I thought I saw the BKB out on him, but yeah, I'm mistaken. It's kind of surprising, he just tanked up the overgrowth duration, he could have just BKB'd out of it and started killing everything already. Yep. But yeah, Orange, I mean, they literally had, I'm not sure if the Ravage hit 4 or 5. Overgrowth definitely caught all 5 though. And yeah, but still, that's the problem, like if you have nothing to follow up, I mean, <laughs> what's the point of the of the Ravage and the Overgrowth if there's no damage following? And there was no damage following, Isera was more likely retreating, he got Slide of Fist and some Chains off. They got, of course, a bit, like, some kills, but you mentioned it already, like, Sox was dead, and, yeah, there's no damage coming whatsoever. Like, this clings, and I have to say it, so far has been an absolutely useless pick. He didn't, he didn't get towers, the only tier 1 tower he actually tried to get was in the mid, but there, there came the deny out because of a very low level, um, very low level, uh, deny, or uh, low level, low HP cliff, I mean, and then the deny. And yeah, I don't know. Like he can't just dish out damage and now Winter. Oh Winter blinks in to farm up the damn immediate hex. Shackled up. Now it's red. Also going down. There's the tornado catches too. Will they get the follow-up? There's the ice blast hex onto Isera. Three down. 
I think this is the GG call from yeah, Ori. There comes the GG out. But like, yeah, the Manta on the Sven, actually, I love it because of the chains. Like, he doesn't want to use his BKB and he just goes for the Manta against the chains. And then, except for the casket, there is nothing else he has to use the BKB for. But he still has the BKB. It wasn't 9 seconds. He would have been ready for every circumstance in a fight. Yep. I actually love it. It's the first one we cast after 6.81 and it was already a successful one. This is Orange vs. Skype. Let's see if we find more games or if all the round 3 games already started. Let's see. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the cast. Like if you did so, then of course follow on us on Twitch and all the uh, C Dota fans. Uh, many of you have